Right, so welcome to part two in uh, painting with contrast. Okay, so uh, we're going to be using the Games Workshop contrast paints obviously for this, and uh, we're going to be using more models from the amazing Oversworn Miniatures range, Burrows and Badgers, which is a anamorphic skirmish game. So the model that we're going to be painting now is a Beagle Tracker. The idea of this is to show you how to, whether you're just starting out, how to get some half decent miniatures onto the table. Um, if you haven't got time, um, which is often the way with myself, doing battle reports a lot of the time, a lot of my hobby time is now taken up doing that, running other businesses. So again, I need to get these models done quickly and to look good from three and a half, four foot away, whether it be on a camera or doing demos, etc. So uh, these models are great because they're all metal and they're single cast, so they work really well with the contrast paints. Okay, obviously contrast does suffer a lot more with uh, big flat surfaces, so um, oh, armoured tanks for example in 40k, um, they do struggle a bit on that. So what we really need is lots of detail and that's something we get with these models. Uh, so today's model is going to be a uh, beagle tracker. So this is the model in question. So what we have done so far to get to this stage, we have undercoated the entire model with Mechanica Standard Grey. We have then oversprayed with a wraith bone from a higher elevation. So basically what this does is give us a slight gradient on the wraith bone. So at the top it will be nice and clear, pure wraith bone. And then obviously towards the lower and the underside areas, there'll be a lot more Mechanica Standard Grey. That will give us some natural shading before we even start. Other than that, I've just literally painted the base with a single coat of Saddle Brown by Vallejo. Um, only real reason is that I've got quite a few pots of that and I've used it for the other burrows and badgers, so I like all my rims to be the same. Okay, so that's where we're at. Um, so we're going to do a full live video, so literally uh, won't stop it. It will be unedited. Um, once we start until the end and that will give you an idea on time that it takes to get to that standard okay obviously this is to a basic standard so it's literally just contrast paint is all we're going to use um, and as I say if you're happy with that that's great leave it at that point um, we will be basing them and um, if you want to take it on to the next levels then obviously uh, Games Workshop layer paints and uh, various other techniques can be applied. Um, for me at the moment, I'm tending to do contrast on a lot of the stuff that I use for battle reports. And then obviously I'll go back and visit when I have more time and do layers and uh, that kind of thing. All right. So um, hopefully you enjoy. If you do, do subscribe. Uh, if there's any comments, please be nice. Put them in the comments below and uh, we'll take it from there. All right. So uh, we'll see you in a bit with the start of the paint job. Okay then, so here we go. So uh, timer is set and let's get cracking. So what we're going to do first of all, we've got a nice big tunic and we're going to use uh, Militarum Green for the tunic. Okay, so as you can hear the clack, that is the ball bearing in the contrast paints. Contrast paints can settle, so it's uh, a good technique to get yourself some ball bearings. Okay, and pop one in each top. It just allows it to activate the paint a little bit better. Okay, so uh, here we go. So again, what I tend to do here is get a decent amount on your brush using a palette or a piece of tile or something like that just to make sure you haven't got a huge amount there. Um, but effectively what we're looking to do is get push the brush into all of the crevices that we can so that we can make sure that we cover the whole model. Um, obviously the basic way of painting for a lot of people is to undercoat in black. The advantage of doing that obviously is if you do miss anything it will just look like natural shadow. The problem we're using contrast is the fact that if you miss any bits they come out with white gaps or like a light grey gap so it does show up a lot more so you do need to make sure you cover the whole model okay um, but again looking to just get all the uh, the other investment you need to make as well when doing contrast paints is um, some of the original color you've used for your spray as a base paint so if you do make any mistakes you can just apply 
um, the same colour that you've used to spray over to repair any damage and go back and do it. Okay, now because the way contrast paints work, if for example you've undercoated with wraith bone and then you've only got grey sear base paint, you'll get a splodge of a totally different colour. So again, do make sure you do have the corresponding base paint for the corresponding contrast spray. Okay, the three contrast sprays in question are Corax White, which will give you a very light colouring. Uh, wraith bone and grey sear. So grey sear will give you the darker aspects to it. There are plenty of charts available um, on the internet showing you the different variations that the undercoat to the contrast will give. Uh, so they're also worth checking out. Okay, so that is the green. That is done. Okay, so the next colour we're going to go on to is... We're going to try and move away. Now, because we're done with the green, we're not just not going to do these straps. So we're going to choose pretty much any other colour other than that. So I'm going to go with Basilican Grey, because that's his, um, the head of the axe. So that keeps us as far away from clothing as possible. Okay, because I'm speed painting, obviously I don't really want to sit here waiting for that to dry. Um, also, it being uh, January, it's uh, a little bit on the colder side, so... Uh, Paint will take a little bit longer to, to dry. So I'm moving around the model for speed more than anything else. Okay, and then we do have a few straps. So we're just going to effectively put some uh, Basilican Grey in on the buckles. And the advantage with the Basilican Grey is it is a lighter colour. or um, So the snake bite lever which we're going to use for the straps is actually a stronger contrast and the way that will work is that it will actually go over the basilican grey and you won't really notice much of a difference there okay so that has now been applied <coughs> right so the next color we're going to use is <coughs> So he's got a leather um, sort of shoulder piece, really. I suppose um, is maybe the the best way of uh, calling it. Um, so we're going to basically go with uh, a dark red for the colouring there. Uh, but what I'm also going to do, so I'm going to put some in a palette, and then I'm also going to add a bit of snake bite brown just to sort of darken it up. Okay, so we've used flesh terror and snake bite. Okay, and we're going to see what we can get out of that because I want a sort of dark dark ready leather okay so I think that's gonna that will possibly work okay so let's see what, how that applies Okay, so there we have his uh, leather shoulder guard. Right, so I'm now going to go with... Um, do, 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 what should we go with? Let's go with the shaft of the axe now. So we're going to go with wild wood for that one. And again, 
just stroke away from where your target is and then you can gradually move in a little bit closer so where the axe meets the hand I'm just going to put the brush in and just pull away side okay, if you do over over shoot a little bit you can just use your finger to wipe away obviously when you're speed painting you may need to use your original undercoat so uh, next bit is, um, so as he's uh, going to be a beagle, uh, we're going to need some apothecary white. So we're going to basically do his muzzle and his paws and hands in apothecary white. So this is quite an interesting colour in the fact that it comes looks very grey and you sort of worry a little bit, but it does actually work surprisingly well. Okay, just to give it that... Obviously, very little things are pure white. So we go around his muzzle, and then we're looking at his hands and paws. Well, say hands, I mean paws, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I have just noticed that um, I do have a little bit of the base colour actually on his on one of his feet. So I'm just going to again tidy up with the race bone. So now we need sort of like a light uh, brown colour really. So for this I'm actually going to use Agaras Dune. Okay, so it's almost like a sandy colour I suppose. Um, but in actual fact, really what it, uh, what it comes out as is once you do two layers. Again, that's the other thing with these contrast paints. So the first layer will go on. And then what we can then do is we can apply a second layer over the top. Um, in fact, what I might do is I might try and mix it. So I'm going to put um, I'm going to go with three parts. In fact, let's go with four parts of Agaras Dune. Because I've got a feeling it might still come out a little bit light. I just want to add literally a touch of Gore Grunter to it. Okay, just to sort of give it a little bit of a darker tone. So let's just see. See what that comes out like with that little bit added.
Okay, so there we have him at this stage. Okay, so it's only a couple of colours away now really from finishing him off. Um, so next one we're going to do is Skeleton Horde, which will be hit for his um, roll mat or blanket on his backpack. So again, decent amount of uh, paint on there if you want it to go into the recesses. Now again, because we've only just painted the fur which is near, we need to just be a little bit cautious not to not to touch that as we did go. Okay, so that's that done. And our last colour, I think. Am I right in saying it's our last colour? I think we are at that point. Uh, which is going to be snake bite leather, which will just do the backpack and the remaining straps. So yes, uh, it does look. Oh, eyes and nose, heads and shoulders, etc. So we go with the snake bite leather. Okay, and then Black Templar to finish off. So this is for the nose and eyes. Okay, and there we have one finished Beagle Tracker. So we just wait for the base to dry off a little bit more and we'll apply the uh, basing material to that um, and uh, we will be uh, pretty much done. So, so as said, um, basically that's it. Um, that's a non-edited um how long it takes to paint a model uh with contrast and um so there we have it end result um obviously we can tidy up a little bit we can go back and add layers uh, we will do the basing so i'll show you the picture of the finished model at the end uh, but that's it um so as i say for if you want to get a model on the table if you're just new to painting that kind of thing that is it contrast Okay, so you can get decent effects relatively quickly. And for me, that allows me to get uh, wall bands on tables, that type of thing, I get sent rules to review, um, games to demo, that kind of thing. So as such, obviously, we need to get the models done quickly so we can get them on the table. Can't play with unpainted models. So these are the rules. Contrast is your savior. Okay, so we'll show you the uh, end picture. 
When the base is just uh, properly dried and obviously all the contrast is dry, we will then apply the uh, basing material that we use and uh, show the finished article in pictures shortly. So uh, stay tuned for the finished one. All right, thank you for watching.